Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all having an awesome day. Um, I have a really exciting video for you today and there is someone I would like to introduce to you. This is our beautiful girl, Sawyer Jo. Um, she was born May 2nd, 2020 at 429 in the morning, coming in at six pounds, 13 ounces, and 20 and a half inches long. Um, so I would really want to go through my labor and delivery story, um, while it's still fresh in my mind and I don't want to forget or leave out anything because I do want to remember this, this moment. Um, we are back home. It has been a week and a day. Today is actually Mother's Day, my first Mother's Day that I've been able to, to have, um, and spend with her. So, um, I am so thankful and so blessed to have her so I would like to go through how um, our labor and delivery went and give you guys all the details hey guys so it's been a few days since I filmed that intro video <laughs> uh, I've tried to film this video a couple times but it's just been a little bit hectic and we're still trying to get into a routine and everything but um, I want to talk about my labor and delivery story with Sawyer um, so I do have some notes here on my phone that I've taken um, since it has been 11 days now since that happened. So um, I just want to make sure that I touch base with everything um, and just kind of hopefully talk about everything that I want to talk about. But um, so Wednesday night at 11, um, the night before, Wednesday before I went into labor, um, what date would that be? I had her on the 2nd, and so the Wednesday before, it would be the 29th, April 29th, which her due date was April 30th. So I went at around 11 on that Wednesday night, I started having contractions. Um, they were consistently about seven minutes apart. Um, they didn't really like fluctuate or anything. They were, they were pretty six, pretty well six to seven minutes apart, about the same consistency. They didn't really change. Um, and then about six o'clock that morning, they just all of a sudden stopped. Um, so I didn't, we didn't do anything about it. We were just trying to keep an eye on everything. I didn't get any sleep that night. Um, but then around that afternoon sometime, they started back again and they were like five to six minutes apart, which I started freaking out then because they always tell you if they're five minutes apart consistently for an hour, then you need to go to the hospital. Um, which they were so we went to the hospital um, I really thought I was in labor <laughs> the the pain of those were so much more intense than the actual contractions um, that I had when I was actually in labor so I don't know I don't know what that was um, maybe it was my body preparing me for labor but they were a lot worse than actual labor contractions so I'm not sure what that was which I had started which I had went to my doctor appointment and she had swept my membranes um, that last time and I did lose my mucus plug. Um, so I knew things were getting started, but I just, I just didn't know what those were. I really thought I was in labor, but um, it ended up being false labor. We were at the hospital for a few hours um, and then I had a few contractions while I was there and then they just stopped again so they gave us the option of either staying and getting induced since I was over 40 weeks or right at 40 weeks because it was her due date by that time April 30th um, and, or go home and labor at home which we decided to go home and labor at home which I'm glad we did um, because it was a while it was quite a while it was that next afternoon that we went back to the hospital but um they had completely stopped. I was able to go home. I got like three hours of sleep. Um, and then they started again that morning. Um, I would say around like four in the morning, but they were like 30 to 40 minutes apart. So I didn't, I didn't think anything about them. I was just trying to keep like an eye on it. Um, and they didn't feel anything like the night before they weren't as strong. They weren't as intense. Like I just, I didn't think it was happening. Um, and then around noon that day, that Friday, um, they started picking up. They were again about six to seven minutes apart consistently. 
um, but the pain was still like it wasn't it wasn't even really painful it was just like crampy feeling and it um, I mean it didn't change in consistency like they were about the same um, six to seven minutes apart um, but then when it hit six o'clock Friday night um, that's when it started picking up um, they were a little bit more intense I had to stop talking through the contractions and like walking around was the only thing that helped um they ended up being two to three minutes they went from six to seven minutes apart instantly to two to three minutes apart at six o'clock for an hour and so sean and i freaked out um he called the hospital for me uh because i did not want to go to the hospital if they were going to send me home again because <laughs> i i did not want to even just be in the hospital with everything going on i was like if i'm going to the hospital we're having this baby i'm not leaving until we do <laughs> um so he called the hospital they said i should definitely get checked out again um with them being two to three minutes apart and over an hour and since we're an hour we're about 45 minutes away from the hospital my hospital we we needed to get checked out and we weren't going to risk it. So, um, we decided to head to the hospital and in my mind, I still didn't think that this was like real labor. I, I didn't think it was happening. I didn't think she was coming. Like I, there was nothing like the pain that it was the night before. Like I was like, I don't know, this isn't, this isn't happening. But, um, the only difference with the pain that I felt with the contractions was that it kind of like went like the pain started to get a lot lower and I started feeling like these electrical like lines go down through my hips um which I'm assuming was the baby like getting into my pelvis area and like she was working her way down but um uh that was the only different thing about it was those electrical like shocks like through my hips but um and then <laughs> the first time I went to the hospital that car ride was the absolute worst thing I've ever done in my life I couldn't breathe I was about to cry like it was it was the worst but <laughs> this car ride I sat in the back um and it wasn't that bad I mean the the cramps were about the same like I it was definitely uncomfortable um, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't anything like the night before, but, um, so we went to the hospital, we got admitted, um, and once we got to our labor room and they checked me, I was already like four to five centimeters along. She said it was about like that. Um, so she said I was, we were having the baby, so I was already four to five centimeters dilated and it was around 7:30 at night when we got when we got to the hospital. So um they asked me once they checked me if I wanted an epidural, which at that time I wasn't it wasn't anything that I couldn't handle. Like I was like, "No, I I can handle this. Like I don't I don't want an epidural just yet. Like I want to see kind of how it goes." Um, you know, but with each contraction, I was already like I couldn't talk through them. Like I had to breathe through them. Um and it again it wasn't anything that I couldn't handle but it was I was I I wanted to see kind of how where it went from there but once the nurses left and Sean and I started talking and everything like my water hadn't broken yet and you know who knew how long it was going to be before she was actually to 10 centimeters and we were able to push um and I the main thing going into this pregnancy I was like I do not want an epidural I was T really really against it because I just I wanted to do it by myself and I wanted to um like not have the fear of everything that comes along with the epidural as far as you know everything going wrong that could go wrong and um you know not being able to walk right after and everything like that but um once Sean and I were talking and everything I I came to the conclusion that I did want to get an epidural so I did go ahead and call the nurse and have her um, get a hold of the anesthesiologist to get an epidural because my main reasoning for that was if I'm already like having to breathe through these contractions and I can't speak through these contractions once my water breaks then you know they always say that it gets so much more intense after your water breaks so I really didn't want to be to that point where 
I couldn't focus on anything else besides the pain because I wanted to experience this moment with Sean and not be so out of my mind with focusing on, on trying to manage like the pain and the contractions that I couldn't remember anything from our labor and delivery story. So um, I did go ahead and do the epidural and the anesthesi anesthesiologist came in there and he was amazing. Um, Sean had to step out of the room, which I was really uncomfortable with, but I totally understood that it needed to be a sterile procedure. Um, and I had my nurse with me who she actually was in there the night that I had false labor and then she was back the night that we actually had her. So it was kind of, it was kind of funny um, and, and cool that she got to see, you know, the birth of her um, since she dealt with me the night before and everything. But uh, she was in there with me and then the uh, labor tech was in there with me and they were both amazing. Every, every one of the staff members there through labor and delivery was awesome. Um, I mean, they really know what they're doing and they're very, very good at what they do. Um, but they were both in there with me plus the anesthesiologist and they were just talking and, you know, we were having a good time and it wasn't painful at all. Like when the epidural went in, like the one thing I felt was the lidocaine injection. I think that's what it was. It was like the numbing, the numbing shot. Um, I kind of jumped on that, which I was scared because I was like, if I jumped on that, like what if I jump on the epidural and I mess it all up and I get paralyzed or something like that. But, um, it all went okay. So I jumped on that and then, I mean, it was completely numb when he put the epidural in, so I didn't even feel it. And, but it was very, very different. So like once he put it in, like he had, he had to like, I don't know what he was doing back there, but, um, he had me like tell him where I felt it at. So like right side, middle, left side. And so like the first time it was the right side and then you could feel him like moving it around, moving. I don't know how an epidural works, but you can feel it like it went to the right side and then it was like in the middle and then it went to the left side and I had to tell him like where I felt it at when I felt it. Um, and it like worked, I mean, it worked instantly. Like it, I was a completely different person. Like I didn't even feel contractions anymore. You know, it was, it was not bad at all. Um, but I had that and then, um, let's see. So after I, you have an epidural, you do have to get a catheter placed. Um, so I did have a catheter. That was the first time I've ever gotten a catheter and that was a very strange experience. <laughs> it wasn't painful, but you can feel it, um, just like sitting in there and, um, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't bad at all. And then they remove that catheter right before you're about to push. So, um, that gets taken out right, right before you start pushing. So I had that. And then, um, I was actually once we were we got to the hospital it was nine hours of all of that labor and everything before we started pushing and we had her so we got there at 7 30 i had her at 4 29 um that next morning and i think i mean i think i went through labor pretty quickly like i i don't think it was a long labor at all um i didn't have to like you know it wasn't hours upon hours i it didn't it went so fast like it felt like it was not nine hours it felt like it was like four <laughs> um everything goes so fast when you're when you're in there labor and delivery um but whenever they started checking me um they would check me my dilation and everything but i started to get this really sharp pain in my back like my upper back above like it was like above the epidural and i don't know what that was but I kept calling them in and I was like, it's hurting so bad. Like, and they would look at it and then they, I mean, there was nothing that they could do. Like, I don't even know what it was. I don't know what was back there, but I was like, this is hurting really bad. And it was hurting, like that was the, the worst pain of it all. And I don't even know what it was, <laughs> um, but it was like a constant pain. And when she checked me, when I called her in there for that pain, I was already at an eight. I was in eight centimeters. And, um, I had started feeling very nauseous, like very, very nauseous, which they said that's normal, um, you know, in labor. And I did have the shakes very bad. Like I was shaking uncontrollably, um, which they say that, you know, that's like a general, 
adrenaline and hormones um so i was shaking and then i had this pain in my back and then i got really nauseous when she checked me and i was eight centimeters and when she turned me she was like let's switch sides and see if that helps so like whenever she was going to turn me over i vomited everywhere and thankfully she had just handed me like a a vomit bag <laughs> um but i lost everything and sean was asleep at that point um to and he wakes up and i'm vomiting and she's got me turned over and everything is like going crazy so he said that was one of the most scariest parts of the whole thing uh was him waking up from his nap and all this is happening <laughs> he didn't know what was going on but um so once i vomited and everything i kind of calmed down but when i vomited um the my oxygen level dropped and then Sawyer's heart rate her heartbeat dropped as well so they had me get on all fours um they put oxygen on me um and she stayed in there pretty much the entire time after that holding the monitor herself on my belly listening to Sawyer's heart heartbeat and just like watching everything um and I dilated really fast after all of this happened um and I she kept like I was pretty much there I was at a 10 10 centimeters dilated but I had like a tiny bit of cervix left and you can't push until all your cervix is completely out of the way because you don't want to rip your cervix but um so I just had like a tiny bit left and it was just like prolonged it was like prolonging and I was just like ready to push because you could feel like my epidural was still working full tilt and everything but um whenever they're close to pushing like you feel this intense pressure and like you you feel like you need to push like um <laughs> it's like I started feeling like the like electricity jolts in my hips again um you know and I could start to feel the contractions which they want you to feel contractions as you've like progressed to 10 centimeters to start pushing because you want to use that feeling of the contraction to actually help push the baby out um but my epidural was still in full swing and it wasn't like painful it was it felt just like my contractions felt when i was at four or five centimeters with the epidural so i could only imagine what it felt like without an epidural <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm very very glad that i decided to get an epidural because I would be so out of it focusing on that I would not I would not even know what was going on but um so she she monitored the baby and she monitored me for a while and then um once she checked me the last time it was ready we did a few practice pushes okay so for some reason my camera cut me off and um stopped recording but I think I was at the point where we did some practice pushes um she went and she called the doctor and um she they then everything just started happening really fast everyone was rushing in they were getting the tables ready they were getting me ready everything was going on and she had me actually my nurse that uh, that helped me through this entire thing she actually had me start pushing and she helped me and she was like you know working working everything along and then until the doctor got there um and then you know she removed my catheter before before we started pushing and everything but um so she got everything set up the doctor came in and um i only pushed for 17 minutes so um that wasn't long at all i don't think and it really does feel like you are just having to take a really big poop <laughs> so um also i don't know if i talked about i was group b strep positive um from my last doctor's appointment i am group i was group b strep positive so i did get two rounds of antibiotics pushed through um it took about 30 minutes to run the antibiotics in which is another reason why i decided to get the epidural as well because when they're running your antibiotics you do have to stay sitting down or in your bed you can't get up and walk around and if i couldn't get up and walk around through that pain like i don't i don't know for 30 minutes I don't know that it would have been too much but um so i had two rounds of antibiotics and you, there takes 30 minutes for it to run in through your iv and then you get one every four hours until you have your baby so i had two rounds of antibiotics um ran through so everything was fine on that um and then with the pushing so you push through your contraction um 
and you do 10 second intervals and they count for you and like I did not breathe through those 10 seconds <laughs> um I was pushing so hard uh it was basically you know just like something was stuck and you just wanted to push as hard as you could to get it out is basically what it felt like um and then in between each pushing session I had oxygen and Sean was holding the oxygen to my face um to keep my oxygen up and he did have to remind me you know breathe in through your nose out through your mouth like slow because I started like when it got close to the end like right before she was out um it I was starting to like hyperventilate because I was holding my breath so much and I was pushing so hard that when I was done I would just like start breathing so fast trying to get oxygen in um so it really helped for him to like um you know calm me down tell me to breathe breathe in breathe out and then we also had a hand a handheld fan um he held on me and that really helped a lot so i recommend getting one of those that pink fan that i showed you in my video of what i was packing to the hospital that thing was awesome the nurses loved that as well um they said it was a really good idea so um i highly recommend getting one of those and bringing that it definitely helped um so the last push that i did it was an amazing feeling. It was so crazy. Like she, so normally sometimes like when a baby gets pushed out, like their head comes out first and then their body comes out with the second push. But she came out all at once. Like, um, it was just all at once thing. Like there wasn't her, she just like came out and it was such a crazy feeling. Like it was like just this like, <laughs> I don't even know like it just like slimy slippery like just like came out all at once um but it was like the best feeling in the world because like you have all this pressure and all this like pain and then it just is instantly relieved and like she came out and she was crying and I was laughing and crying and there's so many emotions that are just going through this entire thing um but it is one of the best feelings in the entire world. And when I was going through labor, like before I went to the hospital, I was like, I don't know if I can do this again. Like, this is so much, like this is a lot. And then as soon as she was here, Sean looks at me and he's like, so would you do this again? And I said, absolutely. I would 100% go through all of that again. I would do it all again in a heartbeat. Um, it is, It is literally the best. But, um, so when she came out all at once, uh, I did end up tearing. I had a second degree tear. Um, so I was torn pretty bad, but honestly, it didn't bother me. Like I plan on doing a postpartum video. So I will talk about all of that postpartum stuff whenever I do that video. But, um, they stitched me up and you can feel like you feel the needle going in, you feel the sutures. Um, and my epidural was still working at this time. And so you know it wasn't bad it was like a little pinch and then you felt it pull like it didn't really really bother me um except like when they got closer up that's when it started i had to breathe through it at once breathe through that a little bit once but with her on your chest and everything like that's all you're focused on and um you know doing skin to skin and she's here and it's i mean it's you aren't even focused on half the things that are going on around you <laughs> at that time um but I did I did tear um and I had that so uh it took about like 10-15 minutes for her to suture me up and then once that was done like they were wanting me to get up and try to go to the bathroom and I felt awesome like as soon as she was out I was ready to get up and run like I felt so good like they were surprised that I could walk to the bathroom and I was like I have to pee I peed right away like they were shocked about that um and then she taught me you know how to do aftercare and all of that which I'll go into a little bit more during my postpartum video but um I was able to urinate on my own uh and it really wasn't that bad like I didn't have that bad of pain um I and while I was in the hospital I only took like one Motrin a day um it, it didn't really bother me like I mean it was sore but it wasn't it wasn't painful at all like it was definitely manageable it was just basically like a period like you were having a period it, I didn't bleed bad like I I thought it was actually really I I went through it really well so um let me see if I have anything else to add here um but 
once they had me like stitched up and everything, um, they started doing her measurements and they got her measurements. So she was 20 inches and a half, 20 and a half inches long. Um, she was six pounds, 13 ounces, and she has the longest, skinniest legs. <laughs> I'll try to insert pictures as I like go through this video through our labor and delivery experience. So you guys can see kind of like what we went through and like how it was, um, there, but, um, it was awesome. And then they, they got her little footprints and she has the longest feet, but it, it was just so surreal. And it was, I mean, it was one of the best feelings in the world. Um, it just opens your eyes up so much to, you know, becoming parents and they're just instantly here, you know, something that you've waited for for like nine months um, and your whole world gets changed within a few hours. Um, but I think my labor and delivery story went went pretty well for the most part. I mean, I don't have anything really negative to say about it um, and she's here and she's healthy and that's all we could ask for so um if you guys have any questions i would love to answer any more questions that you may have so please leave a comment if you can or follow me on instagram and send me a direct message um but i would love to answer any more questions so i can do like a question and answer video after this if you guys have any more but um don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you are new i would love to have you be a part of our family um and i will see you guys in the next one Bye.